Here we go, folks. Outdoor Eats Season 2, Episode 1. If you are new to Outdoor Eats TV, well, it is a combination of a Saturday morning food show, three or four recipes you're learning and cooking along with the chef, combined with the travel show, combined with an adventure show. So enjoy Episode 1 of Season 2. Good morning. It's early. I mean, like, really, really early. We are day hiking it up to sunrise at Mount Diablo State Park outside of Oakland. It's all about trail brunch today. We love brunch inside, but I'm here to show you that you can eat amazing brunch outside. Let's get up there. This area outside of San Francisco, completely unexpected. Man, this has been such an adventure for me because I just realized what I've been missing out on. I love a good brunch on a Saturday or Sunday, you know, relaxing and having a nice meal, but we should be able to have great brunch on the trail too. So we are showcasing two great brunch recipes and one of the classic dishes is Eggs Benedict. Chili Killers! Chili Killers! <laughs> Plus some classic brunch drinks as well. Chef Steve, dude always knows. I'm Chef Corso, hiker, backpacker, and classically trained chef on a mission to elevate outdoor meals because food on the trail should be so much more than just calories. Join me and my friends as we explore beautiful trails and cook up quick, easy, and delicious meals to share together. This is Outdoor Eats. We're at Mount Diablo State Park just outside of Oakland. I was really excited to hear that they had a full state park and full campground here so we could really explore and maybe up for a new challenge in trying to get the sunrise hike. Joining me on this trip are two of my great friends, Sue and John. They don't know each other, they're meeting each other for the first time. I've known Sue for a long time. We have gone on day hikes, we have gone on long haul backpacking trips together and she is always up for an adventure. I have never been to Mount Diablo. I'm so happy. Steve invited me on this adventure. John and I met in college. We have been on a lot of different adventures, but the thing about John is he's fit, but he isn't really an outdoorsy person. But he's really curious about this whole outdoorsy thing. I've lived in Northern California for about 11 years now, and amazingly, Steve had brought me to a spot that I didn't even know existed. I'd never been here before. Not every trip is perfect. Sometimes you are rolling into camp and it's dark. And for this one, we set up camp in the dark. And all we really wanted to do was figure out how we could roll into our sleeping bag as quick as possible because we knew we had a really, really early morning rise. The alarm was set for four o'clock. Luckily, it was actually quite, quite warm and quite nice. But we packed up our stuff and hit the trail to try to make it to Summit for sunrise. This was my first sunrise hike. I've never gotten up so early before in my life by choice <laughs> to do something as adventurous and fun. I have seen four o'clock a.m. recently, so it didn't scare me from that standpoint, but the camping out and not having necessarily the best night of sleep, it's a little bit different 4 a.m. feel. When we finally got to our vista and got to our coffee spot, I think all of our jaws just dropped at how beautiful it was and how the sun was hitting the ridges and how many ridges there actually were. It's been a complete surprise, just exploring this park, having the opportunity to see the sunrise uh, on top of this mountain. It was uh, an incredible experience. We made it to the summit. We made it just in time for sunrise. We're all enjoying some nice coffee here on the top, enjoying the beautiful light as it hits these gorgeous rolling hills. What a hike this morning, and then to get this view with the payoff, just incredible. I know a lot of you out there take along a summit beer or some sort of summit drink. For brunch, you should have a Summit Mimosa. Wow, look at this. Nice. This is our spot for brunch. Nice. What's next, Steve? We are gonna do dirt bag brunch here, right on the rock. But first, you guys need a Summit drink, because you earned it. You got up with me this morning. Heck yeah. Good thing I came prepared. Whoa. Yes, what do you got? You had that there the whole time. <laughs> we are doing dirt bag mimosas. So the thing about a dirt bag mimosa, so you just take an orange wedge, you wanna crack that open for me, Sue? 
happy to do so. Nice squeeze. Wow. Dunk it in there. That mimosa was, uh, was a nice surprise uh, from Sue. Uh, it's the perfect way to uh, celebrate that achievement uh, of hitting the top of the mountain. Man, cheers, buddy. One what sec, a... one sec, I gotta squeeze. Oh yeah, you need that orange. There we go. Cheers, guys, cheers. we made what it. What a morning. There is food coming, right, Corso? There is food coming. Dirtbag Eggs Benedict, that's what we're having today. Oh man, it's a morning of dirtbag. It is a morning of dirtbag. <laughs> that sounds great. While you prepare brunch, I'm gonna enjoy the views over there. Nice, all right, we'll see you in a bit. What I've been able to do with this Dirtbag Eggs Benedict recipe is select some ingredients that are a little bit easy packing, a little bit more mindful of perishability, while still giving us that same Eggs Benedict experience. So do you know the term Dirtbag? Uh, well, I'm familiar with you, but um, other than that, no, you're gonna have to reference that for me for brunch. What does that mean? Yeah, being a dirtbag means that you just, you like getting dirty, you're okay sleeping in your van or sleeping outside for, for a, a couple nights, and you're okay with, you know, not having all the creature comforts. Not afraid to get dirty and, and just get after it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we are gonna get going here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my burner going okay. and start to toast up our English muffins, but what will be really helpful is that if you could start to hydrate some of our ingredients. Oh yeah, sure. So hollandaise comes in a packet, it's just like a gravy mix. Okay. Yeah. And so you go ahead and put that in the bowl. Sure. One other thing we're going to add to our hollandaise sauce is a little bit of oil. So that's looking good and we can let that chill over there on the rock. So over here, I am putting some oil in our skillet here. And I'm going to get our burner going so I can start to toast our English muffins. Toasting gives you a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture, and a whole lot of flavor that if you just pull it out of the package and eat it, sure, it's gonna be fine, but you're missing out on some layers of flavor that only take a few seconds to achieve. This is looking great. So exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, look, oh man, that looks awesome. And once they're done, we can just set them over here in a bowl to reserve. Steve, I noticed one thing. It doesn't look like you're really following a recipe. Uh, how are you doing this, man? Yeah, so I, I've made this a few times, so I'm pretty confident in what we are gonna be, be getting out of here. Okay. What I also did is before we left is I went to OutdoorEats.com and I pulled up the recipe right here. Oh, so that's how I can do it. Yep, you've got the nice easy steps, all the ingredients. You can use it as a final checklist as well. And our English muffins are toasted up, so we are looking good to move on to our next step. If you could just cut our lemon in half, and we're gonna give that half a lemon a squeeze right into our hollandaise sauce mix. Yep, got it. And I think you taught me this one once before, where you uh, yeah, make, yeah, make sure you do the it all over the hollandaise. Okay, right, make yeah. sure you do it in the right Great. one. Great, but this you do it this way, and you catch the seeds. I yeah. remember you teaching me For that sure. one. And we'll put those seeds in our packed out bag. Oh, cool. Great. So the thing about smoked salmon that is a, makes it a really great trail ingredient is it's really high in protein, really get high in fat. And then the other thing which really makes this a, a great backpacker ingredient is powdered eggs. We don't have measuring spoons, so we're just gonna eyeball it. You are good at eyeballing. Most Eggs Benedict recipes use poached eggs. And sure, you could boil some water, poach some eggs here, but that's gonna take a lot of time. And I'd rather just do scrambled eggs. So we'll add our scrambled egg mixture to our smoked salmon, and this consistency is is awesome. Oh, I nailed they, it! They rehydrated re really, really well. All right, perfect. I want you on my dehydrated egg team for yeah. sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. You made you made the cut, man. Oh, it feels you so good. Keep this at a nice medium heat, medium low heat. The other thing we're not going to necessarily add right now is salt. Smoked salmon tends to have a, a good amount of salt. I don't necessarily want to automatically add salt to our eggs here. We'll taste it a little bit later and see, see how we're doing. This skillet of eggs is looking great. Heck yeah. So now it is time to go to our final step here, which is making our hollandaise sauce. Wanna go ahead and add that for me? See in here, I thought we were done with this, but not even close, right? Scrape that out. And the thing about these powdered mixtures, the, the gravy packets, the hollandaise packets, is they have some starch in them and that will activate and get nice and thick, but you do need to get it up to a simmer for that to happen. Wow, look at that. Yeah. It's wow. thickened up in just a few seconds. Yeah, nuts. Give that a try. Wow. 
great lemon flavor. Give you a spoon for oh. you can try it too. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that's gonna be good on those eggs. So now, for our final step for our brunch, we're gonna clean off a nice flat rock here and really chef it up. Those look so good already. I can't wait to taste this. We're gonna put our hollandaise on first. Oh, yeah, that's right. Drizzle, drizz that on there. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Yeah, a little bit of garnish. That looks really, really good. Absolutely. And I think we should get Sue back over here so we can enjoy some brunch. Sue! Brunch is ready. Woo! Say no more. <laughs> here. Power the views over there. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Here we got. Smoked salmon eggs benedict. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I did that. That was. That was you. That <laughs> yeah. And be smells. careful. This can get a little bit crumbly, but okay. thanks, thanks for waking up with me. Hey. Oh, thanks, Cheers. Porcel. What do you think, guys? It is so good, man. I really love the salmon in there. Just the whole combination. I would, I would order this at a restaurant and be happy. Like, <laughs> it was unexpected to eat something that hearty after a long hike that early in the morning. It was creamy. It had some great textures, and the buttery English muffin on the bottom just elevated it. My friends are off enjoying the Vista right now and I am finishing up our trio of dirt bag recipes here on the summit of Mount Diablo. The other classic beverage for brunch is Bloody Mary's. And I love setting up a Bloody Mary bar at home, so I did a Bloody Mary bar on the trail. I like selecting a couple meats, a couple cheeses. You could even do some pre-cooked bacon, the classic celery sticks, some hot sauce, some seasonings. And I went a little bit different here today and I've never put a fruit roll up in a Bloody Mary, but we did it this morning. Yeah, the Bloody Marys was yet again another surprise. I love the make your own Bloody Mary bar that he had prepared for us. The way he crafted it with a nice piece of nature with the twig and we were able to put pickles on it or some cheese. Uh, it's a perfect way to celebrate that achievement uh, of hitting the top of the mountain, even though he called it dirt bag. But hey, we'll live with that. <laughs> I was really happy that we made it to the summit, that we were able to catch sunrise, and that we were able to have a couple great beverages to complement it. We were able to really relax and enjoy the view, enjoy the space, enjoy each other, and just soak it all in. This area is classic, classic California. We've got the golden sunshine coming in, hitting the green rolling hills. The poppies are popping. I'm not gonna lie, the hike back into camp was very welcomed. It was great that John and I put up our hammocks right under the canopy of these amazing trees. Oh my God, I've been looking forward to this for so long now, and I just can't wait to get in this hammock and chill. Well, Corso does a little cooking and Sue and I can finally just be at peace. How's it feel? Oh my God. Ask me in the morning. <laughs> Mom says you can't have chips for breakfast, but Corso says you can have chips for breakfast. We are making our next brunch recipe here at the campsite, doing a little bit of base camp cooking here, and we are making chili quiles. Chili quiles! Fun to say, easy to make. If you've never heard of chili quiles, it is a classic Hispanic and Mexican breakfast using chips. So think of it like a deconstructed enchilada. So you've got corn tortillas, some salsa, some toppings, maybe throw some eggs or some protein in there, and you've got a great, great breakfast that's a different option to consider. So we're gonna cook it all up here in our cast iron skillet. I know a lot of you guys out there have a classic two burner stove like this for base camp cooking, so that's what we're gonna cook on today. And our ingredients are very, very simple in just a few. We've got a bag of your favorite corn chips. They can also be old. They could be a little bit stale. They could be a little bit crunched up. That's, that works really, really well. And we have some salsa. And I love using these salsa packets rather than a jar of salsa. If you're comfortable with taking glass on the trail or comfortable taking glass in your rig, no worries. But I love having these pouches along. It's a little bit, little bit more safe. First step we're gonna do is we're gonna crush our chips if they aren't crunched already. So hot chip tip. 
So most of you guys open the chips from the top. What I suggest for you guys is open it from the bottom. And why open it from the bottom? Gravity. Gravity pulls all the salt or all the Cool Ranch flavor to the bottom of the chips. And so the bottom here is the most flavorful chip in the whole bag. And then the rest of the seasoning has a chance to kind of re-dissipate to the rest of the rest of the party in here. I'm just gonna throw those in our skillet. Just gonna smash those up a little bit. And I'm gonna get my burner going. And for this, I'm gonna keep it on a nice medium, medium low heat. I don't wanna to torch this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and add our salsa pack here. You can make this spicy, you can make this a little bit sweet. You could add your favorite pepper or favorite salsa here in here. And we're gonna wait for that to come up to a nice little simmer and hydrate those dry chips. It's starting to smell that salsa coming through. Our chips are hydrating. If you're making this for the first time and your ratio is a little bit off, so maybe you're a little bit dry or you're a little bit wet, you can just add a few more chips to dry it out. So that's what I'm noticing here. It's a little bit, a little bit wet and I need a few more chips to be able to soak up that salsa. While we talk about some potential add-ons and potential garnishes, so for this basic recipe, I like to add a few fresh ingredients, a few fresh things. So I'm gonna bring my cutting board over here and I'm just going to do a quick little chop on some green onions and some cilantro. So I'm gonna go ahead and garnish up with a little bit of cilantro and our green onions. And grab that lime out of my pocket again. Give that a slice. And give that a nice fresh squeeze here in the sunshine. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste this and see how it is now that we add some salsa and we added our lime. rich, full flavor from that salsa that's nice and warm. But I feel like this needs a little bit more and I think I need some help to be able to make that happen. I had never had chilaquiles before and Chef Corso asked me to help him with rock smashed guacamole. And that was fun to get my hands a little dirty. Oh, hey, you're, you got out of the hammock? You're coming over to help? I'm here to help, Steve. Awesome, thanks. Thanks very much, I appreciate it. For our stone smashed guacamole, we have some avocados, lime, salt, garlic powder, a little bit of oregano. You could add some cumin, or you could add some chili powder, whatever really you like. But the star of the show is a rock. The stone. The stone. Yeah, you is, every kitchen needs a stone. Every kitchen needs a stone. So we use that for our pestle today. I just found one on the trail. We washed it off. Really nice to find in a river too, but use that for your pestle. It's, it's kind of fun. You know what my nephew calls this recipe? rock a -moly. Oh, yeah. clever dude. I know, I like that too. I'll go ahead and open up the avocados if you want to scoop them out for me. Happy to scoop. And then we'll smash them up and add them to our skillet. And open up our oregano there. Just a little pinch. Don't need too much. We only have a couple avocados. Hmm. And you want a little bit of hot sauce in there? Oh, please. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah? Do you want tapatio or cholula today? Can we do both? Uh, sure. You want spicy? Sure, yeah. yeah. There you go. Duo, a medley, a duo. <laughs> duo hot sauce. <laughs> and then we'll add some fresh things if you wanna start to smash. So what I love about using the rock, it really gets some of those flavors in there. So instead of chopping or just stirring with the spoon, that rock is gonna smush that garlic powder, that salt, all those flavors right into the avocado and make it extra, extra good. We'll go ahead and squeeze a little bit of lime in there. I think we should try it before we add it to our skillet. See if we need any more salt, see if we need any more spice. How'd you do? Mm. The freshness with the lime. And mm. now I'm getting the heat from our duo spice. That is muy, muy bueno. Bringing over our chili quiles skillet. Chili quiles! Chili quiles! Chili quiles! And let's blop our stone smash guacamole on there. Yes. Oh, wow. And let's see how they... That looks too good to eat, Steve. <laughs> no, come on, we're, we're totally eating it. <laughs> Dig in. Okay. Mm. Just a bag of chips, a little bit of warm salsa, a couple of avocados smashed with a rock. 
Steve's so brilliant where he can take those few ingredients, bring them together, and just make it a whole different meal. So simple. So simple, so good. Again, you can make this your own. Add some different protein, some different veggies, make it spicy, add some fajita veggies, whatever you like. I'm gonna take this back to my hammock. <laughs> <laughs> nice, go ahead. Okay. John was a great help in cooking up Benedict and kind of bummed that he uh, was sleeping in the hammock and missed out on the chili quiles. But you know, you snooze, you lose sometimes. When I woke up, there was luckily just a little bit left that I could, uh, could dig into, but that nap was glorious. This area outside of San Francisco, completely unexpected. I didn't expect the lush green landscapes, the rolling hills. It's been a complete surprise. Yeah, no, this has been such a wonderful little escape and be able to do this camp out and hike. Such a great little refresher. It was perfect. Thanks for coming along for our day hike brunch adventure. I'll tell you one thing, I could use a nap. Get out there, cook something amazing somewhere awesome. Boca boca. Stay tuned for episode two where we visit St. Petersburg, Florida and explore some very approachable outdoor activities as well as celebrating seafood in the region for recipes that are great for base camp cooking or for cooking up on the trail. Get out there. Boca boca.